Hello, everyone, and happy Saturday. And we are back for another Saturday of creating in our studio. So my name is Robin McClendon. Welcome to my studio. For those who are, who are new to my channel, those of you who've been around, hello. Good to see you again. I know we're chatting it up in Premiere. If you are new to my channel and you enjoy um, this video, make sure to hit the button for all to subscribe. And when you do, then YouTube will send notifications and then you can get notified an hour, a half an hour before, and then you can join us for a live chat over in Premiere. We're in there from all over the world making all kind of friendships and meeting people we wouldn't otherwise have met. And so a lot of new friends are being established and it's a lot of fun. So please join us for premieres on Saturday mornings. And in the meantime, today I thought it'd be pretty cool for us actually to make some art. Like what are we going to do with all of our gel prints and what do you do with them Robin? I get that asked a lot. So today I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I do with them. I work on my cradle boards. I have a lot of them different sizes. Um, it's one of the surfaces I work on. I also work on canvas as well depending on what I'm going to be um, adding. But I have two six by six um, wood panels unprimed. You can get them primed so they be all white. You can also prime them yourself with gesso. But I'm going to be working, so it just depends on what I want to be able to see through them. Now in this case I am going to be working with natural colors and I'm going to be working with these papers here that we made um, a week or so ago. So um, yeah, we're going to work with these two. And in that being the case, I really want to play up the neutral background in this piece. So I'll be working with one of them right now. I normally will make um, a diptych or a triptych. I'll make two of them. So today we are going to, let's just get started with, um, with this 6x6 panel. I like these. They're not really exp expensive flick I think they may be this size may be like eight dollars or something like that but it's a nice thick profile it's about an inch profile and um, or inch and a half it says inch and a half cradled and um, these are very durable very strong and I really like them so we're gonna do that I'm gonna use some PVA glue and I think I'm going to hand tear these. Um, the loops are already here somewhat, so I kind of want to play up on that and um, and then using the natural colors. So we're going to take those two things and we're going to get started. Okay, so I, I'm using this um, paper. It's actually a waste sheet that I use to print um, my, st my stamps on using the persimmon ink the fountain ink, the Ayer Suzuki, and then it's also got coffee staining on it, and I crumbled it. I really love the texture of this, and so this is going to form like the background segments. So I'm going to go ahead and rip this probably about, just going to eyeball, but I'm thinking I'm going to do maybe two inch strips, something like that. All of these I think I'm, I've decided I'm going to do sort of like, um, as neutrals, I mean, as um, uh, sort of kind of working with this this sort of neutral color here with the red, and um, I think this is about a good thickness. Let me see a, basically what it is. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but it is about inch and three quarters. This one's probably closer to. Yeah, this is about an inch and three quarters also. And this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to have them about, about as long as this, as the, the, the length of the board. So I'm just going to tear it a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and get these strips figured. They're going to overlap, but right now figure that this will give me yeah, what I need to cover this surface. So the idea is that I have some basic strips here. Now with those strips, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's 
go ahead and get this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rip around the um, kind of the circular pattern and down. And uh, just have this, this idea in my mind's eye. And that's basically how I create. I'll just sort of kind of figure out what it is that I'm thinking. And then I really like this torn edge. I'm just going to sort of figure out where we're going to put these. Main thing is I sort of want to keep uh, this sort of circular pattern and we'll just build up. Just kind of follow the, since we have these natural circles here, we might as well kind of work with them. And you'll see where I'm going with this, this edge. Let's go ahead and make this around it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these strips and um, kind of overlap these patterns. So it's going to be something like that. And then I'm going to This, this had a natural sort of rounded line that was going with it, so it made it perfect to kind of do um, this sort of thing. But so just kind of go with, uh, just kind of look at your pattern and sort of figure, you know, what it is that you could have squares. Um, or... Uh, whatever shape or you could decide you might not want it organic and you want to kind of cut them more um, into a specific shape you could do that too that's good there um, this is how I like to to work with my collaging and uh, sort of I'm very organic you know, very free form. Most of you who are familiar with my work know that. So this is sort of a very loose and easy way to work without a lot of, um, you know, stress. But you kind of, kind of hit it the way you, you know, feel most comfortable. And one more piece. One there, well, two more pieces. Let's look at this. Let's get this piece here. The main thing is I'm getting rid of all the corners. And, and this is the paper that we did a couple of weeks ago where we um, did the reverse painting. where we did our mark making with our Poscas and with the um, fine liner and then the pinata and the gold. And then um, now also some of my gold is coming off because I didn't set it. So if you don't want that to happen, um, I forgot to do that before I got started, but I'm okay with it because I really like the line and sort of the batik feel of the, um, of the paper still. But if you don't want that to happen, you can also use a matte medium. You can paint over the entire thing when it's dry with matte medium or even a spray medium fixative, and that will lock in. But a matte medium will do a good job. That'll lock in the gold, and then it won't pop off of the paper. So just know that if you start working with it, and, um, you know, no need to... Um, have that happen to you. Okay, so now I'm going to work around here and see. Let's put that one there. 
this one here so let's get I'm gonna go ahead and get my Giotto and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these on there so let's get a you could definitely use your um, matte medium. You don't have to um, use glue stick. I happen to like the Giotto. I really find that it holds well. It's strong on projects. So let's see. So I'll put that one there. So you're going to see what I'm going to do is I'm sort of figuring where I want to put things. So this top one is going to need to hit right kind of at the top. I don't mind it being a little bit off the page because I'm going to, I'm going to do this so that it's, it's, um, and that'll overlap some. I'm going to do this so that, actually I think I'll do this side so that this this top row will be pretty much flat across the top now you could i'm, I'm doing this dim, like in a dimensional way so you could definitely um do this so that um you could have it you know glued down flat completely but i like things to have a little dimension in my work so i'm not going to glue it down too tight I'm gonna do a little bit more but uh, and when I go to actually glue this with my PVA I might hit some of the the areas but we're pretty much going to do something like that so that would be the top piece and so then if I make this one the next one you see how we're getting this really beautiful oh my goodness overlapping and our next one will probably go here but I think I'm going to stagger it this way because I'm looking at how my, my colors are lining up. And that'll be the last one. Or should I do that as the next one? Because this one is kind of high. Let's do this as the next one. So what you want to do is as you're laying them down, as you're doing a strip, kind of, uh, you know, play with the placement. and see where things are going. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> I'm trying to create and talk. So, um, so we can see here that I'm liking this overlap. So, you know, we want them to overlap. So we get this really nice sort of dimensional work. And if when you're done, if you don't want it to be dimensional, you can always, when we go to glue it or when you use matte medium, you can make it uh, go more flat. But I happen to like the dimension, so I'm going to um, keep it like that. Okay. Okay, so this one we can line up at the bottom. So this one I want to move over just a little bit more. Let's put that there. How are we doing? Are you seeing this good? Okay, and that one there. Okay. Also, because it's not completely glued down, if I want to kind of line it up underneath a little bit for placement, I can kind of play with it. So, I think that's pretty good in terms of um, placement. Oh, I love it. Isn't that fun? Mm. Okay, so let's start with this one first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush, one I use for glue. I've already put some water on it, and I'm using some PVA. 
Well, let's just go ahead and get some PVA on this board. I like to introduce water into my brush before I go right to the PVA because it sometimes can be a little tight and this stuff dries quickly and it's a good good bond so you don't have to worry about that part of it so let me use my um, catalyst you can use that you can use a credit card whatever you want to do okay and then the next one just going to overlap a little bit and then this is our next one just kind of overlapped as we've planned now you'll see some of it's going to go off the edge and we can trim that we'll trim that when everything is dry it's best to do that when it's dry and I'll show you how I'm going to lift this up just a little bit because I want to kind of get that underneath there just a little bit. So you can do that too so that, uh, you know, depending on how you want things to overlap. So I just kind of wanted it to flap over just a little bit. So I raised it up so that it would slide right underneath there. And then... This would be our last one. Okay, so that pretty much gives us this piece like that. So that's kind of where we are right now Now I see a few places that I want to like I have a you know a lot of the pink going there so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab some of the red and I'm just gonna kind of take smaller pieces and overlap and sort of just kind of keep um, sort of building up underneath these pieces that flap that's the other thing about leaving your um, when you're collaging like this, it, it, it allows you to stick things in places um, because you still have that area that's kind of flapping. And I like to work like that because um, I never know where I want to add stuff when I'm looking at color. Like I was seeing a lot of that sort of magenta and I wanted to break it up with some of the red there. So that allowed me to stick that in there. And I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit of this here so I like that there so let's put that there get a little more down here so this is a really oops a really neat way to work with your um, your papers and a cradle board and you can do these as a series you know um, like I said, triptych or diptychs, whatever, however you see it shaping up. Okay, so now what I think I'm going to do, um, because I, no, no, I like this. I was thinking something else, but I think I'm not. I have a space in there I want to put some red. Let's get this. This paper goes a long way. You could really, this sheet and maybe one other sheet, you could literally um, make, you know, it's plenty. Now this is a 6x6 six six cradle board, but it's plenty to do, you know, a diptych or a triptych. I'm just sticking with this one color palette because I know I had so many colors going in it but of course you can mix colors and you know put in contrasting colors like black and white in here okay so 
okay so I like that now what I'm going to do is I am going to get some um, matte medium and now I'm going to go ahead and lay this down it's going to still be textured by the way we did it but um, I want to get things a little smoother I think I'm gonna like that um, So this is the matte medium. So what I'm gonna come back in and just start. Smoothing it down. And because of the way we did it, we're still going to see um, sort of the texture a bit. But this will just start knocking it all back and kind of, I don't want, I don't want mine uber smooth, but if you do, of course you can, as you put it down, really use a catalyst tool or a credit card or whatever you want to use and uh, really smooth it. So I'm just going to let the paintbrush kind of do its thing so that I can get so I'll still have a little bit more texture. Now you can really go ahead and get these edges so that when this dries, the paper will be stiffer and then we can, we can cut it more easily. And I'll definitely come back and show you the best way to cut this once it's dry. So now I'm gonna really use my paintbrush and make some contact. I definitely want this to have more texture to it so I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. If you didn't want any texture, then you would want to lay every layer down and smooth it really good before you go to the next. But the beauty of this whole thing too is that with the matte medium, as it as it dries, it, it'll tighten onto the cradle board. So we'll get some tightening going on there. Boy, I like that. And I think I got like a little piece right there. I have like a little hole. So let's just go ahead and take a piece of scrap that we have that we've cut from. And we can put it right here. Just all blends in nicely there. So any place that you see like that or anything that you want to um, add a little more dimension to, can so we're going to let this dry and then when it's fully dry I'll be back but it's so cool I mean you just get this really beautiful random line and um, you know sort of abstract really beautiful Piece. Now you could go on and collage more on top of this if you wanted to use this as a background and then do something a little bit more um, representational um, depending on what your what your icons are, if they're flowers, if they're faces, portraits, you could actually then do that on top of like this really cool background so you know you can have at it. But most of mine is abstract expressionism so I just love color and line and movement and uh, we'll be back when this is dry so I can show you how we're going to clean it up. Okay, so I'm back. <clears throat> Everything is nice and dry. You can see how our papers have really sucked down nicely to that board. And that's what um, your Asian papers will do. They're just such a beautiful long fibered paper and when they dry they just tighten back down to the board. And so we have these rich layers but a really nice smooth surface. So the way we get rid of all of this, everything is nice and dry. You want to take a nice sharp X-Acto. You just want to angle your blade in against the edge of the cradle board. Don't try to go through all at once. The trick when you're using an X-Acto is just to, to go through thin layers at a time and that way you don't rip your paper and you don't cause like crazy tears to happen inside of the frame. So once again, just go through, you just wanna cut through a few of the layers at a time until you've, you've gotten through, use the edge of your blade to move stuff and then that way you can see what's cut and what isn't. Let's 
do this. The mistake a lot of people make is they try to go through you know, all the layers at once and, and apply a lot of pressure. And that is not the way to use an X-Acto, especially if you don't want to get, you know, crazy little rips and tears in your stuff. Just take it easy. And then that way you get nice clean corners. And we just have that little bit down there to do. And then this is ready to add more. Probably what I'm going to do is use, I like to put encaustic wax on mine. So I'm going to continue working on this piece. I'll probably add some of my scripting and um, some encaustic wax. And, I'll, and then me and my patrons, we've been working on that, working with encaustic waxes and stuff. So I'll continue doing that. But, and for those of you who are on Patreon and, and the BTS, we're going to keep on working this one through. But for everyone else, this is perfectly fine to stop there. There is enough matte medium on here. If you wanted to continue to add um, to it, you could. I'm probably going to layer some of my scripting on it, like I said, that I've done on some other papers. But you can continue to add to this, or you could stop here. And this is perfectly just a beautiful piece. Now, you could put more paper around the side, or you can paint it. I will probably paint it um but you know you can do whatever you want to these sides or if you like them natural it's perfectly fine to leave them natural uh, with this color i think it looks good but yeah so there that's an easy project to do with your um with your gel prints and all the amazing papers we've had you could just i mean there is just an infinite amount of ways to collage on these cradle boards and just you know have at it and just you could have a whole wall of these six by sixes. How cool would that be? Just you just keep on building to a wall, almost like a gallery wall. You know how they do it with um, pictures and you know all kind of different artworks. And they call them uh, artwork. They call it a gallery wall. You could actually start your own gallery wall, six by six, as you make all these amazing papers on your gel print. And we do mark making, what have you. Grab a six by six cradle board. It's a good size. And you could just keep on adding to that wall and just have an amazing wall in your house or your studio. Yeah, love it. Alrighty, so until next week, thank you for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the um, the thumb up and that way, you know, YouTube passes it out. And if you're new, hit the bell, hit all, and you'll get all the notifications only half an hour before um, the video starts every Saturday at 7 a.m. Pacific time you'll get a notification. You can come in and join us over in Premiere, hang out, chat, and just have a wonderful Saturday morning. All right, take care. Love you guys. Uh, until next week, have happy um, I'm creating a wonderful week and just have fun in your studio. Love you. Bye-bye.